Hey students, I'm Chris and I teach the only online course in English as a second language for students who want to study politics, history, and the world around them. If you want to learn more about my ESL for Politics courses, send me an email at the address in the description and we'll talk about which course you might be interested in taking. On my other channel, which you can check out here, if your English is really good, I've been spending the past month talking about civilization. So I thought I might summarize for you, my students, what I've been saying there. First, let's talk about the word. Civilization means a couple of related things. Its first meaning is mass society. In other words, a civilization is a lot of people living together and interacting regularly. Uh, in that way, civilization is the opposite of a hunter-gatherer society. One of the things that characterize civilization, one of its characteristics, in other words, is a division of labor, uh, which basically means people specializing in their work rather than just doing any and all different jobs. So if you're watching this video, you must be part of civilization by this definition, because only really large groups of people working together over a long time could have invented the internet. Writing, money, and a state are also part of most civilizations, though historically not all of those things have been necessary for uh, civilization itself. The other meaning of the word, usually expressed as the adjective, which is civilized, is to be polite, controlled, and following etiquette. The interesting thing to me is how these two meanings are related. Now, I've said that civilization doesn't require a state, but over time, all civilizations got conquered by someone. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what the state is, please check out this video, because I'll be talking about it a lot today. So most civilizations have a ruling class. Um, you know, rulers, like kings and queens. Rulers don't actually add anything to society. They only take. They use violence to impose a social system that benefits them. And they're smart, so they know that their subjects, their people, their workers, their taxpayers, it, it helps if they give those people an ideology to believe in. Because if they don't give them an ideology, then those people might rebel against their rulers. So they tell their subjects that life under civilization is always better than the alternative. So what is the alternative? Well, that's barbarism. Barbarism really means the opposite of civilization. So it has all the negative meanings that go with that. Um, the uh, opposite of civilized is barbaric. That's the adjective. Um, we see someone killing someone else in a movie, for example, with a lot of blood, and we say, oh, that's barbaric if we don't like it. And over time... Our rulers have made us think that we could either have polite, controlled, civilized society, and that our rulers are to thank for it, or we could have barbaric, bloody, wild, 
uncivilized society. That's the society of the barbarians. When states wanted to expand, um, and, and they always want to expand, they knew they would need to expand their power and territory by war. Because you only have power over people if those people will do what you tell them to, and you need to use war to impose that on people. Hunter-gatherers don't stay in one place. They move around looking for food. States need people to settle so that those people can work for the state. Early states forced people to settle uh, into farming wheat or rice, mostly, depending where in the world they were. Um, now, people who escaped their rule, who, who lived outside the state, maybe, needed to be conquered too, so that the state could always expand its power so that the people on top could always have more. Well, what if the subjects of the state didn't want to kill those people, those, those uh, barbarians? What if they were scared? So the states gave them a reason. They told them, you live in a civilization. That means you're superior. See, we have writing and schools. We have culture. You can see there another word with two meanings, culture. Every group has a culture. That's just the way people think and act. But we also use the word to mean what they call higher culture, like music and theater and art of other kinds. And it's also used as a mark of superiority. So we say we have culture or education and so on, so we can feel superior. This talk creates the image of, of how we see civilization and the image of the barbarians. Because if we're superior in these ways, they are inferior in the opposite ways. We have culture, so they don't have culture. We're polite, so they're impolite. So it's okay to kill them to help the king get new slaves. Civilization has always existed in opposition to the barbarians. They've always existed together. They have to exist together, because the rulers of civilized society have to have an enemy. The barbarians are the enemy of all civilization. All rulers need to do is give their subjects an enemy, because if there's an outside enemy, an external, scary, foreign enemy, then the enemy can't be the rulers. The rulers will say, we defend you against the scary foreign enemy. You should be scared of the barbarian and fight for your civilization. And that is the history of propaganda in a nutshell. Hmm. Now, the main reason that I think it's still important to talk about this subject is because this artificial divide between civilization and barbarism is still part of modern propaganda. <clears throat> Even today, when states or empires want to expand, they divide people into civilized and barbaric. All civilized people, they say, will fight with us to defend civilization against the barbarians. That's how they get support for themselves and especially for their wars. I'm going to use one example because I think it's such a clear example, but there are millions of examples you could find if you looked for them. 
And if you just listen to governments and presidents talk long enough, you'll hear something similar. After the attack on 9-11 in New York 18 years ago, George W. Bush, President of the United States at the time, made a speech in Washington in which he prepared everyone for going to war by drawing a line between civilized and barbarian. And he drew that line in several different ways. And, and the words that he used are still being used today. I'll put a link to his full speech in the description. Uh, you probably don't want to watch the whole thing. It's long and boring. You know, for now, I'll be throwing up some quotes from his speech onto the screen so we can talk about them and you don't have to read the whole speech. Okay, let's look at uh, this first part. George Bush said, freedom itself is under attack. Now, whether or not the word freedom means anything to you in your culture, in the United States, freedom is a kind of badge or label that that everybody uses to describe the U.S. It's not something they question. It's, it's a word that is part of what it means to be American. And that's why he used it. So he's saying here, not just the lives of 3,000 people who died um, are under attack, but freedom itself, that big thing that we believe in, is under attack. Now, how... Uh, how a, t a foreign terrorist organization can attack freedom, I'm not sure, but people didn't question these things. He also said terrorism, uh, he used the word ter terrorism as a threat to our way of life. So, again, um, freedom itself, or everything that we believe in, whatever those things are, are are under attack. So just, just a terrorist attack can take away, some, somehow, can take away all of our freedom and all the other wonderful things we have in our society. Well, can it? I, I don't see how. <laughs> a government can. States can take away all of your freedom, and of course they did after 9-11, uh, but we don't expect our rulers to be consistent um, in what they say and how they act. Now we can compare or contrast uh, uh, those two things, freedom is under attack, terrorism is a threat to our way of life, we can contrast that with something else he said, where um, the terrorists, the, 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 this terrorist organization wants to impose its radical beliefs on, on people everywhere. In other words, um, they've got these really radical, these awful beliefs, and they're going to impose them on us. So that's the opposite of freedom, when people impose things on you. Um, they, they can't do that. There's no way that a small terrorist organization located in Afghanistan at the time could possibly invade and impose its, its views on people in places like the United States. But if you can get people to think that, then you're, it's easier to support the war and to support any other laws that do literally take away people's freedom um, because at least we're not the barbarians who are doing it. Okay, let's look at something else he said. This, I, I think, is the most telling quote. Um, Americans are asking, why do they hate us? In other words, why do these terrorists hate us? Now, do they hate all Americans? It's hard to say. They hate what they see here in this chamber, a democratically elected government. They hate democracy? I don't think that's 
one of those things that were their their complaints, their grievances um, that that made them want to kill people. But okay, sure. <laughs> um, their leaders are self-appointed, which is they, they choose themselves instead of being elected democratically in a democracy, in a vote or an election. Um, they hate our freedoms, our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble, get together, and disagree with each other. Now, again, I don't think um, any of the terrorists said anything like that. They, they probably weren't thinking any of those things. But um, this is a great example of a speech by a ruler, a president in this case, that's about telling the people who they are. And all talk of civilization is, is about telling the people who they are by talking about their enemies. So, so here's who you are. You believe in democracy and freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom to vote, and so on. Um, that's who you are. And the enemy, they hate those things. Okay. <laughs> it's all about your identity, what you're supposed to believe in. Um, just like the next uh, quote that he said, uh, again, it's, it's designed to tell people who they are. This is not, however, just America's fight. And what is at stake is not just America's freedom. This is all the world's fight. This is civilization's fight. He didn't need to use the word barbarians. He didn't need to say those people are barbarians. Because just saying we're fighting for civilization kind of means by contrast that those people are barbarians. This is the fight of all who believe in progress and pluralism, tolerance and freedom. Well, is it? <laughs> but again, these are these words are the values that the rulers are telling you you believe in. They're saying you believe in progress and pluralism. And by the way, pluralism is um, having, it's like freedom of speech. It's when lots of people get the chance to talk or, or live together in society. That's, that's pluralism, more or less. Um, tolerance and freedom. So just those words, and, and again, those words are still being used today to describe um, whoever we talk about as barbarians. Um, we believe in progress and pluralism and tolerance and freedom, and they, they hate those things. They hate us for those things. Well, we don't want to change who we are. So we have to go to war to stop them from stopping us from progress and pluralism and so on. Uh, and finally, every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you're with us or you're with the terrorists. <laughs> um, this is a great example of what's called a false dichotomy. Where, where someone says to you, you have to do either this or this. Those are your only two choices. Now that's, that's called a false dichotomy. Um, either you're with us or you're with the terrorists. There, there's, no other, uh, there's no alternative, no other option. Well, I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, I don't like you and I don't like the terrorists either. So, I disagree. <laughs> you should always be careful when people present you with a dichotomy, either this or that. Um, a lot of the time, they're just trying to, to force the decision or um, your, your support. They're trying to force you to make the obvious choice. Oh, well, obviously, I'm with you, with, with us. I would never side with the terrorists. Well, to me, both sides were terrorists. 
<laughs> Let's review the vocabulary, shall we? So uh, we looked at mass society. Since we're talking about civilization, mass society, um, just lots of people living together, interacting, that's kind of the main thing of what mass society is. Um, the opposite of that is the hunter-gatherer society. That was before civilizations and states, all humans were hunter-gatherers, moving around, looking for food, going to the next place, small groups of people. Um, to characterize, it's like to say something is a characteristic of something, um, what characterizes a face, nose, eyes, mouth, that kind of thing. The division of labor is important when talking about uh, history and the history of civilization. Sociology is important because uh, it means people divide their labor, divide their work, uh, among themselves. So one person specializes in making this kind of tool and he just makes that kind of tool. One person specializes in doing this thing and they just do that thing. Um, that's, that's basically what the division of labor means. We learned the word civilized as an adjective for civilization. Uh, etiquette, those are the rules for social behavior. Again, something to question. Why is that the etiquette? Why is that what you say is polite? And what am I if I'm not like that? We use the word conquered because states conquer people. They, they, they take your land, they beat you in a war, and they have conquered you. They impose their social system on you from then on. An ideology is just a set of ideas. I talk a bit about that on my other channel also. To rebel is when you fight back against uh, the, the people who are keeping you down. Um, it, it could be against your rulers, but it could be against your parents, for example. People rebel against their parents just by doing things that their parents wouldn't want. The word barbarism is supposed to be the opposite of civilization, along with the word barbaric, that's the adjective, and barbarians are the people who are not civilized, basically. Um, states want people to settle, which means to stop moving around, stop being hunter-gatherers, and stay in one place, usually so they can farm. We learned the word propaganda briefly, which, which you may have remembered from an earlier video or two of mine. Um, propaganda really just means um, the lies that our rulers tell us all the time. And in a nutshell is something you use at the end of a sentence to, uh, to, to say this is a summary of what I'm talking about. So maybe you could just use one word and say, yes, that's you or this idea in a nutshell. <clears throat> and finally, uh, we talked about a false dichotomy. A dichotomy is a choice uh, where you only have two options, and a false dichotomy is where they someone tells you you only have these two options when maybe you might have many more options. You're either with us or you're against us. Well, maybe there's another thing you could be. Sometimes. <laughs> so now you can see one way that rulers get us to support them and why Historically, we have fought their wars for them, but we shouldn't be. Thinking critically about the idea of civilization and barbarians, how those things are used to control us, is all part of freeing our minds. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, please hit like, make some comments if you have any questions or anything, and please subscribe to this channel for more great lessons like this one every week.